Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. Welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. We have today part two of the Vogue 8772 Sew Along. We are currently making View B. Well today we start sewing View B. <laughs> we got everything all ready to go last week so now we're actually going to start sewing. So today we're going to be doing all of the darts and the button bands and then also attaching the tie um, collar. So that will be happening today. Uh, and then next week we'll tackle the sleeves and the cuffs. As always, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer those as quickly as I can get to them. Also, um, I do have a coffee account, which is kind of like a virtual tip jar. I have a link to it down below. Um, that just kind of helps uh, support the channel a little bit um, for these sew alongs more specifically. <laughs> um, you know, all of the different equipment and uh, supplies and everything needed for those. Um, so yes, I do have that. If that's something you're interested and able to kind of help with. Much, much appreciated. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday, and I'll see you again next week for part three. Bye. Okay, day one of sewing our blouse. Okay, so what we are going to do first is um, sew our darts. So again, you should have everything interfaced that needs to be interfaced. Um, I've got my front here and my back right here. Um, let's start with the back just because there's a lot of darts. <laughs> um, also, let's see, this is, we're going to be doing steps one through, well, two, I guess, two through seven on the instruction sheet. If you are following along with that, I do things a little out of order, but that's basically, I just think it's easier to go ahead and sew all the darts all at once. Okay, so I've got my back here. Um, the front and back of my fabric is very similar, so I have marked which one is. Um, is my wrong side and for me the wrong side is the one that's on the inside here and I've marked that because I've marked all of my darts um, and I have used Taylor's chalk oh there it is <laughs> and I'm having trouble seeing where I have marked there's one okay so I'm just gonna go through and do one half of um, the blouse and then on camera and then we'll do I'll do the other half um, off camera just because I can do it a little faster all right again I have spray starched my shirt this is the wrong side that's facing up um, we have a shoulder dart here so obviously we have um, this on both sides of the back but I'm just gonna do one on camera one side on camera and then there's my Sorry, this is, I was debating on what fabric to use for my muz or for my um, version to do the sew along for, but I decided to use this because I wanted to talk about sewing with um, silk and slipperier fabrics, but I do know that like a solid would have been much easier to see. So I was aware of that when I made this decision. Okay. So the way I like to do darts, which I realize is not groundbreaking, in fact, <laughs> but it's funny because this is one that um, I have have not done my darts this way forever. Um, it's actually fairly new. Um, I s can't remember now who I saw doing it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so smart and so easy. And so I did it on the channel and then someone, uh, quite a few actually, not just one person's commented, oh, that's how I learned to do it. But <laughs> Like, there's nothing new in sewing. It's all just, you know, ideas and, you know, there's a hundred different ways to do different things. Um, it's just funny. Things come back around. Okay. Um, I also want to say I put a brand new needle. This is a size 10 needle. Um, I do recommend a Microtex if you've got a home um, machine. Those are just it's a sharper point. This is just uh, my industrial um, size 10 which is a little different. I have regular Guterin Mara 100 thread, which is a polyester thread that's in both my top and my bobbin. I am sewing on a 2.5 stitch length. Um, you could go smaller. Some people do their darts where they sew down a certain stitch length when they get close to the point, they'll, they'll lower the um, stitch length as you get towards the point of the dart. I just like this method now and it doesn't require doing that and it's a little, a little quicker. So anyway, let's sew our darts let me make sure you can see everything so you're not going to be able to see the point of my dart because it's going to be hard to see but that's this pin is marked um the point of my dart so i left the pin in there too because 
while I did spray starch this fabric, um, there are definitely parts that are stiffer than others. And my shoulder seam was a little flimsy there, so. I go within one thread there, pretty much right on the edge. Turn it around and come back sewing right on the fold there. And then back stitch in within the bar, the dart bolt is what I'm trying to say there. All right. Now you will, of course, do this on the other shoulder as well. And then we're going to do our waist dart because I am going to sew the waist dart here in the back. And I am just matching up. You can kind of see right there is my mark that I made. And I used a tailor's chalk. So I am just matching that up. And then here's my, this is a fisheye dart, which means it has a point at the top and the bottom. And then the bulk of the dart is in the center. Um, okay, Ugh, I knew this was going to be hard to mark, so. All right, so these are, um, this is the, the fat part of the dart. So it goes fat, and then it gets skinny at the top, and then it gets skinny there at the bottom. We're going to start at this point, and I'm going to sew it per normal. I'm trying to do this around. Sometimes it's easier to, there we go sink my needle. All right, now we're going to sew down to the point here at the bottom. Then we need to sew from that point um, up to the other side. So then you flip it over and you start. Make sure everything's lined properly. Start at that point here. Okay, so there is one waist dart sewn and one shoulder dart sewn. So I'm going to go do this on the other side of the um, of the blouse. I'm going to press my shoulder dart towards center back, and I'm also going to press my waist dart towards center back um, on both both sides. So I am um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will meet you back here to do the um, darts on the front. Okay, once we've done the back, now we're going, I've got the front here. Obviously, it's got its strip that is interfaced here. Um, I went back and kind of marked my darts just a little bit more with a friction pin so we can see. So I've got my dart point, which is right there. Can you see that? The pink kind of right there. <laughs> I can see it much easier. Okay, we are going to sew our darts. So I'm going to fold my legs together. I'm also making sure I'm doing this correctly on the wrong side. You do if you've got fabric that looks very similar on the right and wrong side. I mean, just pick a right or wrong side when you're cutting it out, but then you do need to be consistent because there could be just enough variation that maybe you won't rec notice it until you're in like natural light and one half of your shirt is a different color than the other. <laughs> Not that I would have ever done anything like that or known anything like that. Just kidding. I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna sew the side dart on the front. Thank you. 
Okay, now I'm going to go um, do the other side, obviously, and I'm gonna press my dart down, my dart bulk down, and then I'm also going to press um, the front on the first fold. So it one, I mean, eventually it's gonna be one fold and then two folds, but um, for right now, we're just gonna do one fold because we're actually gonna finish off this top neck edge a little bit. Um, I did not have you stay stitched. That was bad, Whitney. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, you're gonna actually finish off this front part of the neck edge before you att we attach the um, um, tie collar. So um, anyway, we just want to fold it once. So the first fold line that's marked on the pattern, I've notched mine and press it. And then when we come back, um, we'll actually be folding it over this way on the right sides to finish this off and then it'll get turned, you know, correctly to the wrong side. So um, yes, so basically press your dart bulk down and then press this um, front edge on both sides um, over once to the wrong side and I'll be right back. All right, so I've already done one side of the front. I'm gonna show you where we're going and then we'll do the other side together. All right, so I've got my dart, it's really hard to see, sorry. My dart is pressed and the bulk is pressed down there. Here's the top. Um, so we're finishing off, you can see there's a seam there, finishing off this top edge because the, the uh, tie will get sewn up to this point. We are gonna stay stitched, but we're gonna do that once we've done our shoulders. Um, and then this has been turned in and top stitched down. So there is a double fold of this on the um, wrong side and then top stitched on the front. Okay, so that's where we're going. So here is my other front. So I have um, already stitched the dart, which you watched me do, press the bulk down, and then on the wrong side, ugh, like so, I have pressed that one um, interface piece to the wrong side and my neck got really weird up here. And I think that that is just, I'm actually just gonna trim that off. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> okay. All right, so I have pressed this to um, the wrong side. Here's my neck edge. So it's pressed once to the wrong side. This is wrong side. So now we have our other fold line, which if you're making the other version with the collar, this just gets folded again to the wrong side, um, pressed and then top stitched. But we wanna finish off this top because we don't have a collar stand that's gonna finish that off like the other version. So instead, um, you actually have a mark that is right, I've marked mine right here, that is a square on your pattern this pin marks that. So we're actually gonna turn this and line up that fold, um, should line up. So now I'm, okay, so this is the wrong side. So now we're gonna flip it to the right side and we have this folded edge, but we're gonna fold all of this to the right side and it should fold on your fold. I, ma I marked my um, fold line there at a notch and that should reach all the way over here to your um, square. So now this is, fold it over on itself um, to the right side. So now we're just gonna go over here to our sewing machine and we are going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. And you wanna stop at that um, square, which should be right at the end of that fold. Right at the end of the fold there. And now it asks you to clip from the top of the seam allowance down to that uh, square. Don't clip through your stitching, just to it, like so. And then I'm going to trim my corner here. And I'm actually gonna trim the seam allowance of that placket just to get that bulk out of there, like so. So now when we turn this right sides out, like so. All of that is gonna fold correctly to the wrong side. So here we are again, this is our wrong side. And then this should stand up straight. There's our seam allowance that our um, tie is gonna get connected to. So now I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I'm going to um, press this all nice and neat. It should be an inch and a quarter wide, all the way down. 
Uh, the pattern instructions actually have you finishing off the hem in a similar fashion, but we're not going to do that because we're going to use bias tape. So just, um, yeah, just press it all the way down, give it a good press, and I'll meet you right back here. All right, so everything is nice and pressed. This is the wrong side, so there's everything um, folded up. Now you have two options. You can hand baste this if you'd like or baste it with the machine and then top stitch it from the front. Or um, I have a single hole um, throat plate on my machine because I don't. my machine doesn't do a zigzag stitch. So my bobbin stitch looks very similar to my top stitch. So a lot of times I will just top stitch with the bottom. It's, I'm actually bottom stitching, not really top stitching. <laughs> um, but if you've got a throat plate that has like a, a little wider um, opening for a machine to be able to zigzag, um, a lot of times your bobbin stitch will look different than your top stitch. So just keep that in mind. Um, and, and maybe that just doesn't bother you because it really didn't bother me when I was working on a home machine. So to each their own. But now we're just gonna stitch all the way down at the front, right at the fold of that placket we fold, we folded over. And then we can just give it, you can see my top stitch there. And there it is on the right side. Very nice. Um, and then our top, of course, is finished off nice and neat up here at the top. And then we've got our seam allowance that's still protruding there. Um, so I'm just going to go hit this again with the um, ironing, uh, the iron, <laughs> uh, just to get it nice and crisp. And then we're going to come back and we're going to French seam our shoulder seams, fronts and backs together, um, so that we can... Um, then attach the collar. We'll do some stay stitching and then attach the collar. Okay, so um, this is my back and I have it um, wrong sides up. You can see there's my dart bulk there at the waist and here's my darts. Um, well, you can kind of see them. <laughs> Sorry again, busy fabric. Uh, my darts here at the shoulder. So this is wrong side up. So we're doing a French seam, which um, if you've never done one before, they're beautiful. It's a beautiful seam. It's just a little extra step. They're nice and strong, though. They're great with um, lightweight fabrics because it looks beautiful on the inside just as it does on the outside. Okay, so I am putting my um, shirts together, wrong sides together. So this is the front, the right side of my front, and this is the wrong side up of my back. So I am putting these two shoulder seams together, wrong sides together. Now, this shirt has a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. So for our first pass, we are going to sew at three eighths of an inch. Okay. Okay, now it's going to be tempting because obviously um, our next seam that we sew will be a quarter of an inch when we, when we flip it. Now it'll be tempting because we're going to do some trimming and stuff obviously between there to do your quarter of an inch seam allowance on this pass and then do the 3 8 seam allowance on the other, which in theory would mean you wouldn't have to trim your seam allowance. However, speaking from <laughs> experience and as someone that has tried to cut corners before, you end up, especially with silk, with little fuzzies coming out of the seam allowance and it is not a good look. And then there's no easy way to fix that. So don't do that. Do it like this. <laughs> All right, so this first pass, uh, this is the shoulder seam. I'm sewing it at 3 eighths of an inch and the wrong sides of the shoulder um, are together. Okay, now once you've done that, you need your scissors closer. Mine are way over here. Okay, so now that we've done that, I am actually gonna go back and I am going to very carefully, put the tripod in my lap, trim this seam allowance and I am trimming it to like an eighth of an inch. Now, as with any time you've got scissors in your hand trimming seam allowances, only trim what you mean to.
These, by the way, are DHL scissors, or sorry, LDH scissors. This is a locally owned, or a Canadian owned company, but it's a husband and wife. Actually, it was his parents, I believe, that owned it in Hong Kong, um, just his parents. And then they moved the company to um, Canada when they got married. And they are phenomenal. So I got these for Christmas. I got the scissors and also the um, snips. And oh my gosh, and they'll do the sharpening for you when it's time. Just, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just got those for Christmas and been very impressed. All right, now that we have trimmed that to about an eighth of an inch, a little less, I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I'm going to, as best as I can, sometimes it's gonna be hard because it's such a small seam allowance. I'm gonna press it open first, just as best as I can. And then I'm gonna flip them right sides together and press it so that that new seam is right at the top there, okay? And then I will meet you right back here. All right, so I pressed that open and then I've turned it and now my um, back and front are right sides together and I've got that little seam up at the top. And now I'm gonna take it through and sew this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And there's where you get your five eighths. Technically, you've got some turner cloth here but I am using such lightweight fabric that I'm, yeah, we're not gonna worry about it. All right, so now we've sewn that seam. So now this will get pressed to the back per normal. And then you've got just this gorgeous, so that's what the seam looks like on the inside. It's just really pretty. And this fabric is, I mean, you can, it is a little bit transparent, um, I mean, it's busy enough once skin's behind it, it's going to be fine. But if you can see just a, um, especially if you're doing something with chiffon, if you're going to have like a, a shell or a camisole underneath it, uh, French seams are definitely the way to go because then it looks just as pretty. You don't have the bulk and it looks really pretty on the inside just like it does on the outside. So now I'm going to press this to the back and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then I'll come back for some neck stay stitching. All right, so we've got our shoulder seams all sewn with the French seams and press towards the back. So now we're gonna stay stitch our neckline. Um, you wanna go from the shoulder seam to center front and center back. So we'll be doing this in four passes. <laughs> you could do this before this is sewn too. And I always do mine um, right, oops, sorry, right inside the 5 8 seam allowance. Cause I don't wanna have to unpick anything. This is just a regular old stitch, still the 2.5. Now I'll go from the shoulder seam to center back. Also helps those uh, seam allowances to stay towards the back. You just have to keep flipping it <laughs> because, so now we're from the right side. back to the wrong side to do the last little bit. Now, technically, you probably should have done this right after you cut it out. You know, my whole lecturing about how easily things can warp and you need to stay stitched, and then I didn't do it. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so now we have that stay stitch. Now that is, let's see, uh, that was actually step 11 that we did on the pattern. I'm actually going to skip steps nine and 10, which are sewing up the side seams because I wanna put my sleeves in flat, especially because we're, I mean, I always put my shirt sleeves in flat and then I'll sew up the side seam and the underarm of the sleeve in one fell swoop, but especially because we're doing um, French seams. So um, yeah, we are not gonna do our side seams yet. So we're just gonna set this whole shirt aside. And now we need to get our collar pieces, which are pattern piece three. And our first um, thing that we're gonna do here 
is sew these together at the um, end with the notch because that is it says even says center back. So we want to sew those together right sides together and I have already I had to cut these out um, in an interesting way just to get them both on the bias but I've already put these right sides together I laid them that way just so I wouldn't get confused later so and I'm gonna set this pattern piece just aside over here for right now because I we are gonna reference it here in just a second all right so we are just sewing these together five eighths of an inch we are not going to um, French seam this because it actually gets sewn over on itself. So we don't need to finish the seam allowance at all. Oh, that's wrong. Hold on. It wasn't. That's right. Okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to sew this seam at 5 eighths of an inch. And this is step 12. Okay, so I'm going to now, um, I was just reading the instructions there. I'm going to go to the um, ironing table, the ironing table, <laughs> the ironing board, and um, press the seam allow allowance open real quick, and then we're going to do some reinforcing stay stitching. Um, uh, in, so we're going to need to look at our pattern again because we have to go through like a, a square. So I'll be right back. All right, so now we have one long tie piece. So I'm going to look, we're going to look at the pattern here. So our next step, which is, let's see, um, continuation. So now we're doing 12 through 15 on the pattern. All right, so now it wants us to reinforce this square here. So there's a square on the side too, but we are, it says for the notched edge. So on this, this square here, we are going to just sew about, I don't know, an inch through that square. Um, on the seam line, so at five eighths of an inch, um, like an inch total, so like half an inch on either side, I guess. Um, and I'm going to use a nice small stitch because um, that we are going to clip to that. And let me see, that is um, this one. Okay, so I've made a notch. This is actually where my square is, right where that notch is, right there. So I am um, sewing with the wrong side up. I'm gonna take my machine down to like, uh, I don't know, like a 1.2. I'm going pretty tight. Um, make sure I'm sewing through the right thing. It's right there, okay. And I'm just going to sew again, right on the seam line. through that square, and that's a really tight little stitch there. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. Okay, so that's gonna come in important here in just a second. Okay, now, now remember <laughs> to take your machine back up to your 2.5 or you're gonna get some bunched up stitches. Okay. So I've got it wrong sides. We have reinforced that edge right through there through our X. So now we are gonna fold our ties right sides together. And we're gonna sew along the short end and then all the way down the long end, but we are gonna stop and back stitch at that um, square. So my suggestion there is just to leave yourself um, a pen, definitely. Maybe even like a different colored pen, like I have a red one here. So I want to stop there. And I'm actually going to sew with the side up that has that reinforced um, stitching because I want to make sure that I get right on that line, um, but I will stop right there. 
So again, and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So we are leaving the seam open um, between the boxes. So you can put a few. Now this, uh, especially if you're using slippery or fabric like I am, because this is a long expanse of sewing a straight line basically, you want to make sure that you're not um, that your edges aren't aren't pulling. Sorry, I'm also out of frame. That's super helpful. That your edges aren't pulling. You want to make sure that everything is, um, is staying together properly. Now you can um, just use a whole lot of pins if that's you know the most helpful. It's the other box here. Um, I recommend. I don't have a walking foot on this machine, but if you if your machine does have a walking foot, this is a great time to use that so that you're feeding in your top and bottom layers because it's such a large expanse. It's just really easy for things to get skewed. Um, or I'll show you how I, I mean, I'm even using pins right now and I don't normally use pins. Just because we want this to sit really nice. We don't, again, we don't want anything to get all out of whack. Also, these this piece is cut on the bias and um, it can skew kind of easily. It's called reaming when that happens. So when your bias tape gets all pulled funky, that's what that is. All right, we're going to start on this end first just because. No reason. <laughs> so the way we scoot us here. So I'm gonna start, I've got my red pen here and I can see, I don't know if you guys will be able to see my line of stitching there. I've gone back to a 2.5 stitch length, but we're just gonna come up here and then anchor our needle. The pattern has you already clipping into the seam allowance. Um, we'll wait and do that um, after we've sewn this seam. All right, so I'm gonna get it started. And now I just want to make sure that everything is lying nice and flat. I don't. I want to make sure that nothing is shifting, you know, and getting all like twisted like so. So I want everything lying nice and flat. And I'm just going to pinch my raw edges together with my right hand like this. And then I turn it up like this. So that makes the bottom layer have to travel a little further, which helps to keep, the, oops, sorry, helps to keep things, um, it kind of works as a walking foot. It helps things feed through evenly. So we've sewn that one. Now we want to sew the other end. And we'll start. The short end this time. Now remember when I talked about when you're sewing with slipperier and delic more delicate fabrics, just to be very gentle with it. Um, I'm just kind of help like I don't want it pulling, and I don't want to be even though I'm I'm sewing with it kind of turned up. I don't want to be pulling on anything because it can get distorted really easily. So I'm just kind of helping it through a little bit with my left hand and just very delicately going through the machine, so nothing gets distorted or twisted. Patience does not come easy to me, so 
This is one patience has been taught to me through this practice. So we've got um, the area between our um, um, boxes is open. And that was all right sides together. So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, trim or cut that seam allowance. So we're going to go up uh, from the base um, at that box and just cut right to that stitching line, which should be nice and secure because you did that reinforcement stitching. We're going to do this on both sides. And it should be right where you stop stitching, really. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now we're just going to go and turn this all right side out. Oh, first, beforehand, um, trim your seam allowances. So, you know, cut your corners. And then trim your seam allowance down to about half of its width. But um, don't touch the seam allowances where it hasn't been sewn yet. So only through this area that, you know, you've sewn so you can start right here where you've clipped up to that oh my gosh could you, could you be any noisier and we're just gonna from there trim that in half so do that on both sides of the tie um, again turn the tie pieces right side out and give it a good press and I'll meet you right back here all right so I've turned everything right side out and I've pressed it so here is the center back um, so everything's right side out right now this is the center that's not been stitched yet but I've got, you know, my um, seam allowances are pressed wrong sides together now. Um, and then my ties, of course, are tied all nice and neat. I'm going to, I am loving this fabric so much. It's going to be so beautiful when everything's said and done. <laughs> I'm also really excited to show you guys the difference between what it is when it's starched and then how much drapier it's going to get once I've washed it. Because it does, it feels almost like a georgette, like a heavier georgette or a um, almost an organza right now with all the starch on it. But it is a crepe de chine, and it will soften right up after that it's been washed out. Okay, so here is my shirt. We have stay stitched it. We are just messing with the neckline here. So what I'm going to do is take my collar and get this all very confusing. So let's lay this all out right side up. Okay, so there's my shirt laying right side up. The body of my shirt, I guess I should say. And everything stay stitched, so it should be behaving itself. All right, now um, I'm going to attach my tie, and we're going to start. Okay. So basically, this square where we clip to is going to match up with the square right here that we also clip to. And we only want to sew one layer to the, um, so I'm opening up this collar piece here, only one layer to the shirt. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna put a pin there. And we're gonna sew right sides together. You really wanna make sure, see everything is falling off my table here, which is making it pull. Having everything on one level is good. So I'm actually going to stick a pin there where I've clipped and then stick it right there. So I want those two areas to really match up. Okay, now I'm just going to match up. I think, let's see. That center back seam will match up with center back of the shirt. So I'm going to pin that in. I think those other notches were for the shoulder. Um, also keep in mind that you're going to be sewing um, 
a straight edge on this rectangular tie to the very curved edge of the neckline. Just a little added <laughs> something fun. And I think that the pattern, which is like step 13, does it have you? Maybe not. By the way, sorry, 14. Sometimes it'll have you, you know, doing your stay stitching and then clipping so you can spread things. That's just not my preferred method, but poke a pen right there and right there. Okay. And then I've got a notch. Actually, that shouldn't line up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress myself. Oh my gosh, look how much I have to fit into that though. That's, oh, but you know what? We're actually not, I was gonna say, sew it with the uh, more stable side on the top, which typically would be the straight edge, but this is cut on the bias. I'm just remembering that. So we're actually gonna sew with that on the bottom. So we're going to flip this over and let our feed dogs do all of the easing for us on that um, tie, because it is cut on the bias. So I'm just gonna start right here. Just wanna anchor that. And unfortunately, this is gonna be kind of hard to see, but I have a notch right outside of the camera. <laughs> there is a notch right here um, that I'm gonna, I wanna line up with my shoulder. And I'm gonna to have to do some easing to make that work. And that's okay. We can do it. So now I'm just gonna sew this at five-eighths of a seam allowance. Try not to catch any pinches. And again, I apologize for the busy fabric. This would be much easier to see. I agree. Had I done something solid, but um, I really wanted to show this version and my fabric for this one happens to be the print. I do sometimes sew over my pins. <laughs> Not always, but I do sometimes. Okay, I'm just trying to keep my, especially the tie. The tie is kind of heavy, which will be beautiful once everything is sewn up. Okay. Um, there is my shoulder. So just kind of take your time. Following the curve of the neckline. Then you can go back, make sure you haven't gotten any weird pinches, which is what I'm doing, and we're good. Okay, so now um, what we can do is clip into this seam allowance um, through the curved areas. All the way around, and then we want to take it to the ironing board and we're gonna press this seam up I need to have my tailor's point sharpened so badly.
Okay. So now that I've clipped that, you can trim that down if you want, but it's not necessary. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the ironing board. I'm gonna press that seam allowance up, and then, so here's our neck edge. Then what we're gonna do is we want all that pressed up, and then we're going to tuck that under, because we're gonna go back and slip stitch this top layer down onto the collar um, all along the top or all along the neck neckline there, okay? So I'm just gonna go and I'm going to press this up and then I'm gonna go and put some pins, some glass head pins, cause you can press over glass head pins and tuck my seam allowance under and then I will meet you back here um, for homework for next week. Okay, so I have a ton of pins in here. So what I'm going to do next is starting at uh, this side, which is, that's the tie. So there's my um, top of my button band. I'm just going to slip stitch all the way across. So we're doing some hand stitching um, to the other side here, which is folding away from me. To the other side, there's the other button band. And then just give everything a really good press. So um, that's how, what we're gonna end with today. Um, next week, we're going to do our sleeves and um, put those in and then do our side seams and cuffs. And then the following week, we will do our uh, buttonholes and put our buttons on and then do our hem. And I'll show you how I do. I've had a lot of requests on how I do my bias tape. So um, I'll show you how I do that on, so this will be four weeks total. <laughs> so I will see you guys back next week for um, sleeves and cuffs.